Hi everyone, thanks for the intro. Thank you for coming. It's not a huge uh, audience, but it's the people who care, so that's uh, the people I want to talk to. <laughs> um, I, the reason for this talk was that, um, you know, Magenta 2 was coming, I was becoming interested as a PHP developer on what are the things that uh, make Magento 2 so different from Magento 1, right? Because uh, we know, and many of us know, that uh, a lot of the features from Magento 1 Community Edition are going to be the only features that Magento 2 have. Uh, there's a couple extra things on the, on, the, um, on the mix, but it's not much. So I wanted to see what makes from a technology standpoint, Magento 2 different from Magento 1, and also compare it maybe a bit with a few other um, e-commerce frameworks out there. So, um, PHP is not just the world, it's a universe of libraries and things that are, uh, you know, over the last few years expanding and growing rapidly. So, um, that's why um, it's relevant to compare Magento, with the latest, uh, Magento 2 with the latest uh, development practices. And um, a bit about me, I was, well, we're in France here, I was born in uh, the Belgian Congo. I was raised in Buenos Aires, and now I live in Belgium. Um, it's a coincidence that you know, I was in Belgian Congo. I just married someone who happened to live in Belgium. Um, all right, and I've also worked in uh, as a seaman my first few years. So not even anything related to technology, but I was ship and um, sailing around the world. <laughs> um, I started coding about the year 2000, started working with Magento around 2011, Magento 1.3 was just out, I think. Um, I'm a PHP architect at Cube in Belgium and an owner at Strategery, my own um, e-commerce boutique. I'm a SEN certified um, engineer, Magento certified developer plus, organizing it both PHP Limburg and contribute to open source quite regularly. And uh, maybe relevant to this talk is that I'm the author of Inference Scroll uh, from Magento, which is uh, one of the most popular extensions of that category. Basically allows you to load more products on a page via Ajax and um, contribute to open source. Um, what we're going to cover is what standards Magento 2 adheres to, um, how the contributing workflow goes, um, the use of Composer, the Magento framework, I'm going to go into that later, the domain layer, front end changes, and testing. Um, for coding standards, and I'm going to go really fast because I only have 30 minutes, this is a talk for an hour. Um, Magento has, um, follows PSRs through zero, sorry, zero through four. So uh, zero and four, which are auto loading, one and two, code style standards, and three, which is logging standards. They also have a pre-commit hook for PHP CS. Uh, all of this was really important to me, of course. Any, pretty much any new uh, library or framework is following the standards. Um, they also have additional standards that cover the whole range of uh, technologies that Magento deals with. For example, JS and CSS standards, um, where JS and Java and CSS can only be inside their own separate files. Um, in HTML only has to be in, inside PHTML files uh, or jQuery templates, um, standards for semantic HTML structures, JavaScript and jQuery coding standards, less coding standards, because less is what's going to be used to pre-compile uh, CSS and um, their own dot block standard. So as you can see, there's a lot of standards that Magento adds to their stack, and basically what I mean by this is if you want to contribute an extension to Magento and publish it in Magento Connect, you're going to have to follow the standards. I don't know how much they're going to enforce these, but it's a great thing, I think, for the PHP community because it will it's an opportunity for developers to catch up with these things. Many developers that, you know, uh, I mean, unfortunately still don't know about PSRs, um, and they still embed JavaScript or, or CSS in their, in their um, in their actual view files instead of separating them into different files. All of these standards are an opportunity for people to catch up, um, and I think it's going to be great for the community. Contributing to Magento is really easy. You just register. You have to register in Magento Connect to download some of the modules. Uh, it's, for, it's free. And then you fork and pull. So it's the standard fork and pull thing. But there's always someone who uh, you know, makes a pull request and just, uh, you know, pretends the L is okay. Well, there's also a definition of that, and Magento is really strict on this. DC breaks 
must justify their business value, otherwise they're not going. Uh, documentation has to cover all changes. There has to be unit tests for new code and it has to be 100% covered, and that includes functional tests on certain situations, and they have a, a very detailed documentation on when functional tests are needed, when integration tests are needed. So, uh, you know, con contributing to Magento is not just writing a new feature. Um, <coughs> Magento to a composer. I think this is a huge improvement as well. Um, composer basically is uh, package manager and Magento is delegating this to that package manager. Uh, so you can install through Composer Magento 2 Community Edition plus sample data or Enterprise Edition through a uh, um, repo that they have that needs authentication. Uh, you also can install third party libraries and modules and uh, themes and many other things as well through Composer, of course. Everyone wins with Composer in Magento. Everything is modular, and all those modules can be installed independently and deployed if you are doing that, which you shouldn't, but they can be deployed with Composer. Um, that's one of the things I was interested in Magento modules was, you know, I heard of all this talk about domain. Uh, I was interested to see how much each of these Magento modules were independent or not from the rest of the stack. So let's look at the sales module. Um, it requires PHP 5.5, 5.6 or 7, uh, it depends on a few other modules from the Magento stack. And you know, when I opened this file, I was okay, you know, of course it's one of the core modules, not one of the core, but one of the main functionality modules, so it probably is intricate uh, with other modules as well. And well, this is the list of modules it depends on. So I was hoping, you know, uh, maybe they're doing some kind of domain thing and then we can extract a part of Magento and put it into our own application. Well, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, basically, depends on this sales module. It depends on pretty much every other module in Magento. Um, so, in that sense, I wasn't very happy. The version module is the only module that really depends on a few other modules, only on the framework and on the composer installer. But the only thing it does is uh, pings Magento to see if you're running the latest version. So. Um, Intricate dependencies, so each Magento module can only work together with the other Magento modules. That kind of def defeats a bit the purpose of using Composer, but uh, you, s you can still create your own modules that hopefully don't depend so much on these others, and uh, that's where Composer really shines. Um, each module is individually useless, but you know, in, in, in the group of other modules, that makes sense. Uh, they are coherent units. The sales module does only have sales module related stuff. It's not, uh, um, if it's coupled with anything else, it's through dependency inversion, for example. Uh, and they follow semantic versioning, so Composer plus semantic versioning is a great idea as well. The Magento 2 framework, they decided not to go with uh, same framework anymore. They decided they are gonna roll on their own framework. I started to look into that as well. Um, so they, they, you have the framework, presentation layer, service layer, domain layer, and a persistent layer. This is just the general Magento architecture. Um, the dependencies of the Magento framework are same framework one. I was uh, very surprised to see this. And same framework two. From same framework two, they're using the standard layer code HTTP and URI, uh, URI or URI. And from same framework one, they're using JSON, ACL, cache, currency, uh, pretty much uh, a big list of other modules. Um, and then they use some um, dependencies from uh, Symfony, for example, the Symfony code. So, now the important thing about this is that the Magento framework actually encapsulates these dependencies by, so for example, if they're using currency, the Magento framework declares their own currency class. And so the dependency on the same framework one is actually hidden from any module developer on Magento. If you develop a module from Magento, you will have same framework one available, but you shouldn't use same framework one currency, you should use Magento framework. Uh, the class that uses Magento, for the, that Magento framework provides, and that class extends uh, the same framework one currency. This will allow them to get rid of some framework one and develop their own logic behind these classes in the future without breaking uh, backward compatibility. So, so they, they are rolling out their framework. I think this was an ambitious project that ended up like this because they realized you know, they had to ship. 
Um, they also have their own dependency injection container. Most of us are developers. Does everyone know what that is, I think? Yeah? So I'm going to go through, through what dependency injection is. Um, it's basically, you know, the code is good you. Um, dependency injection, this is what the container can do. Of course that, it also manages the life cycle of objects in the container. Um, it has a factory and proxy compiler, then you don't have to create your own factories for every single class. It, as long as they follow certain standards, they're going to be automatically created for you. The same for proxy, uh, and by that I mean the, the proxy pattern. Um, configuration scopes for the admin, for the front end, and virtual types that allow you to uh, even reduce dependency on types even more. Uh, you can uh, pass arguments as literals on a constructor and also translate strings. So it actually has translation embedded into it. Um, it's configured through XML. Of course, you can also configure it through PHP. And then if it also has special patterns that are specific to the Magento framework. In other words, it's a Chuck Norris approved container. Um, so, and also another thing I, I wanted to mention about this is this container, it's not like Symfony's container or uh, Sam Frameworks or any other one. Uh, you cannot use it by itself without also depending on the entire Magento framework because it has translations, for example. So you have to set up the whole thing, inject it into a container. So how useful is the Magento framework? It's up to discussion. I'm not super excited about it yet. Um, the domain layer is basically a series of service contracts or interfaces uh, that each of the modules expose. So for example, the sales module here has an API folder, and you'll find many modules with API folders. Um, inside of that folder are the interfaces or service contracts that uh, that module depends on. So the sales module is, has an order interface, for example, and then somewhere else in that module, you, actually find, you will actually find the implementation of that interface, right? Uh, as a module developer, if you're going to build a module for Magento, you're going to want to search for these interfaces and make your dependencies um, against these interfaces, not against the actual implementations. So I think this is a nice idea. It's really just 10% of what a domain model is, but um, it, it probably not even that. But it actually helps a lot because uh, it will it will prevent uh, so many community extensions that are out there from breaking from one version of Magento to another, as long as semantic versioning is, is followed, uh, you know, all of those dependencies should be resolved uh, pretty nicely. Of course, you always have to check yourself manually. That's always there. Um, all right, so this is the actual implementation of that, of that order interface. Um, and then in the container, you say, uh, for, that inter for, for that interface, I prefer this type this class to be loaded. Can I point there? There. Okay. So you're saying whenever this interface is required in a constructor that depends on this module, feed it this actual implementation. All right. And you can override this on a per module basis and on a per scope basis, like front end versus back end. You can, you can change that. Uh, you can provide your own implementation of the order model only for the front end if you want. So quite flexible. Um, and this is kind of like the overview of how you would use that. You have controllers or blocks, uh, web services and other clients or modules that consume the service layer. Uh, there are data interfaces. Those are the ones that deal with models. And there are service interfaces which are uh, consumed by models and resources. And uh, you know, so all of this abstracts the infrastructure below. Um, Service contracts for us, semantic versioning, class composer, I think it's a really nice combination. And Magento is really, uh, really going to benefit from this. And uh, Magento 1.9, you couldn't up upgrade to 1.9.2 easily because it will break. This is not going to happen anymore. Everyone wins, so much win. <laughs> Front end. Um, how much time do I have? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm really going through quickly here. Uh, <coughs> front end. We're still doing with, uh, dealing with XML layouts. Some people like it, some others not. I personally do like it. I mean, it doesn't really matter what language you use. You can use JSON. The important thing is that it's a really powerful lay layering system. Uh, you can have theme hierarchies, um, template hierarchies, UI components. Magento provides their own select 
component, for example, and so you don't have to roll out your own. It will look exactly like every other select box in the admin if you're building a, an extension for the admin. And uh, translation. For CSS and less, well, uh, less is is a kind of a superset over CSS, kind of what CSS should be, uh, if you ask me. Uh, you can declare, for example, a nice blue color, um, um, create a ni nice blue variable based on that, and in the header just reference that variable. And so whenever you want to change the uh, base blue, you just change this variable, and it will change the entire uh, theme. So that's pretty nice. Um, it, Magento adds a few things over that, like modular updates. You can you can very specifically say which color to operate where again, like in front and back end, or in this area or the, that other area. It's really uh, intricate and actually easy to use. Um, they provide their own UI library, and they also provide ground tasks and watchers, so that you can quickly change uh, CSS and see that in the front. End. Um, this JavaScript stack includes require.js, jQuery, Grunt, um, jQuery UI, jQuery Mobile, and their own Magento libraries as well. Um, before going there, so as you can see, you know, they're, they're really, they chose for jQuery finally before it used to be prototype uh, for the admin. Now everything is jQuery. Uh, they use require.js require just to look what, what's needed. And all of this brings so much modularity to Magento that it actually gives a lot of flexibility in module developers to inject their own, um, uh, for example, JavaScripts, and those JavaScripts will automatically ge get uh, minified and uh, will just be part of the entire pipeline related to uh, asset management. So um, the optimization possibilities of these are huge. Um, for testing, Overall, it has a 41% test coverage on unit tests, and this is just line coverage, right? I'm not talking about use cases or anything. Um, the framework itself has 57% coverage, and the application part, which is uh, um, the business logic, let's say, 35%. Now, before you say um, that that's not enough, I took a look at those tests, and most of the coverage is on areas that are critical like taxes, like actual sales. Uh, if, things, if something is not covered, it's probably something that, you know, is not terribly important when it comes to business logic. So the business logic seems to be very well covered. And uh, it's growing, the coverage. And this is just unit test coverage, right? Uh, just to compare with a few others, uh, WooCommerce has 22%. PrestaShop is being worked on, I heard recently. Um, but the production uh, version is still not covered. And OpenCart uh, has very few unit tests. It's like just starting, uh, as far as I know. And uh, I tried to run them, but I couldn't get them to work. And I asked for support, and they treat me like crowd. So um, this is just unit tests. But Magento is quite impressive in the sense that it also has integration tests, JavaScript tests, performance tests. This is internal test that the core team uses to make sure that what they're doing is performant, right? So you can easily hook into these tests and run your own as well. Uh, static code analysis, of course, integrity tests, and functional tests on Selenium. You can actually get started pretty quickly, install Magento locally, and it did that, and uh, fire the functional tests in Selenium, and Selenium is just going to fire up Firefox and start uh, adding products to cart, adding orders, so whatever is not covered on unit tests is probably covered on the functional side, and uh, this is incredibly valuable, I think, for module developers to, to be able to tap on, and for merchants that are able to produce, uh, you know, continuous integration solution uh, to, to run these tests, I think it's incredibly valuable. Um, if you go to, if you check out the repository, the tests are under the dev folder slash tests, and there you'll have folders for each of these. So very impressive the, the testing framework they have there, I think. Um, still can be improved. So that was it for the talk itself. Um, please give me some feedback. I'm going to give this talk on a longer version in uh, Magento Developers Paradise and Croatia. So I would really appreciate some feedback on what things you know you think should be covered. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, this is the moment.
Christian. Yeah. Uh, you said that you need to register to test Magento 2. Why? Good question. Good question. Um, even to check out Community Edition, right now you have to register to Magento Connect. I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, that kind of, that's not, from my point of view, 100% open source. Uh, but uh, they don't charge you anything. It's easy to do. Why? I probably want to keep tabs on, you know, and see who's interested in not, <laughs> I don't know, Magento, I guess. For Enterprise Edition, it does make sense because, you know, then you, you need to be authenticated to download certain modules. Did I answer the question? Any other question? How much of a change of behavior of habits for developers is it to switch to Magento 2? Um, I think it's it's going to be a challenge. And uh, if for any developer who has been working with Magento 1 for sure, if that's the only thing you've been doing, it's going to be a challenge, but it's an opportunity, like every challenge, right? You need to step up, step up your knowledge on a lot of things. And it's probably not going to be easy. A lot of people are going to do it though, and it's going to probably raise a little bit the lower of the average um, Magento developer. And uh, and I hope that things like this uh, stick on other frames as well. They see this kind of uh, initiative, and where it's actually quite aggressive if, if you really read the docs. How 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 much control they want over the standards. Um, I think it, it, it kind of like, yeah, if other frameworks pick up on that, it could help a lot the PHP community, community as well. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, I actually have one. Uh, is is um, Magento 2 already released? Like, is there a stable version yet? Or? Yeah, Magento 2 has been released uh, like a week ago or so. Yeah, there's already several websites running it. Magento 2, if you run it on your computer, is going to be slower than Magento 1. But it has all these module improvements, so caching with Varnish, for example, or caching with Memcached or Redis, and they have all these tools. It's going to be super fast. And if you go to any of these websites, I think you're going to see the difference. It's really, really nice. Yeah. And I've got another one. Um, I I'm not really in this. Magento community, but I heard about the OHO guys, OHO CMS, OHO CRM, and can we compare both solutions? Yeah. Like OHO CRM is, is right now just a CRM. It doesn't do anything that Magento does. But you can see a lot of the Magento imprint because it's the same uh, core team, uh, like the interestation into OHO CRM. Um, so, so it's well architected, but it's based on Symfony, so th there are differences. And uh, they're working on an e-commerce solution as well. And nobody really knows how they're gonna tackle that, but most people think it's gonna be like a B2B only solution that works together with the Serum concept. Is that the kind of answer you're looking for? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Anyone else? Um, Magento is an e-commerce solution. Uh, why all the work on, an, or on a, an internal framework instead of using an existing one? You're trying to get the worst out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with you. I mean, why do that, right? Why reinvent the wheel? But if anyone can do it, it's eBay. I guess that's why. Any other question? Uh, you just mentioned eBay. Wasn't Magento's pinned out of eBay recently? Isn't uh, is there some issue? Uh, isn't eBay trying to outsource or sort the Magento or something? I didn't hear of that, uh, but I, I do know that eBay is kind of like kind of breaking down into smaller companies, but the, the rel is still there as far as I know. eBay is still kind of endorsing the project, right? It's it's not that it's, so Magento 2 is still open source, it's still a product that belongs to the community. Uh, but eBay is putting all of this into Magento because they want to be 
you know, the guys to build the best framework, I guess. But, uh, I don't know what their, their idea is behind it, but they're endorsing it really strongly. They're, they've moved developers from eBay to Magento and, and vice versa and stuff like that. So, uh, Any other question? I have another one. Talking about the open source, do you have an estimate of um, how many people are actually contributing to Magento 2? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I can't, I didn't have a real number. Uh, knowing that their team is composed by more than 10, <laughs> I guess that's, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good amount of people um, working on this. Like, I, but when running the unit tests for this, I run them two weeks ago, and, um, and coverage was, let's say, 20%, right? And by the way, it's 16,000 tests that they have there, okay? So it's, it's okay, 45% coverage with, with 16,000 tests. Uh, I checked it out again two weeks later, and coverage had increased 2%. You can do the math of how many more tests that were there, and changes were ridiculous. Like, it took my computer a long time to download all those changes, and uh, so that cannot be done by a small team. I don't know how, how many people there are, but it's pretty big. Thank you. Next question. Imagine to deeply rely on the community and the extension system. And uh, do you know if there is any major release on the extension and uh, or any plan to, to update those, those modules? Like there is thousands of them and uh, what's the plan? Many people like, like me who have extensions there are just gonna have to build them from scratch from Magento 2. So um, it's gonna be kind of starting from scratch when it comes to extensions. Um, but I think the things that benefit us are all these interfaces and semantic versioning and using Composer, uh, plus being able to use the entire test and framework. What I think is new extensions that if done properly, because you can still do whatever you want, you can still depend on not depend on an interface, right? But if people follow these principles, new extensions are gonna be really good, really well written. There's still gonna be issues, but uh, the upgrade paths are gonna be easier. Uh, we, we all look forward to this new uh, way of working, really. It's gonna take longer for yeah. more extensions to come in. Yeah. Thanks again, Gabriel. Let's thank him again.